My goal with this video is one, to take you from being an average guy to a 1% guy. My goal with this video is to basically summarize everything that I know in a singular video to the point that by the time you are done watching this video, if you really heed what I'm saying and you put everything into practice, I promise you within the next five years, you will not be the same guy. And this was inspired by this tweet. I got beef with this guy. Actually, I could care less about the guy. The guy's a genius. The guy's a marketing genius. He, he's getting the attention he wants, right? That's what he ultimately wants. But the problem is the people that listen to him, the people that believe this to be true, that is the problem. There are so many guys, like this guy, that believe just because you have a little bit of money, all your problems are solved. You will not be, su you will be surprised as to how many dweebs become rich, right? You got the doctors, the lawyers, that they were book smart. All they did was try to excel their career, but they never fixed themselves. They never fixed their dating life. And that's where I want to take you. For you to truly be a 1% man, you need to be great in every facet of your life. And here here is the best part. You have the edge. You have the competitive advantage, right? Let's say 100,000 people watch this video. Let's say a million people watch this video. That's still less than 1% of the population. And even then, even if a million watch, only 10% will actually listen to me. Only 1% of those will actually do it and be consistent enough for the next five years to truly enter that 1% across their life. And all of it should start with how you look. Bro, th this, is the, this is the genesis of you becoming the 1%. Because this is what you're gonna realize. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not even gonna tell you it's easy. It is a long road, it is a hard road, it gets boring. You will want to do many other things. You will want to drop off. But the one thing that I can tell you is that when you truly level up, the easiest place to start is with how you look. And it should start from the top down. It starts with your body. Before you touch anything else, forget the money, forget everything, start here. Because your health is the most important thing over everything else. Something you don't realize, it's time, right? Your health gives you time. And as you age, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm still young, bro. I, I'm 28 years old, but as I'm getting older, I'm realizing something. It doesn't matter how much money I have, doesn't matter how much great things I can accomplish. I want my time back because I wanna do more. And the only way scientifically you can actually reverse aging is by working on your body. Now the short term pleasure is how good you look, how confident you look, because I'm gonna give it to you straight. It'll be almost impossible for you to be attractive and be fat. Those two, they just do not coexist. And yes, you'll find people telling you how to dress if you're overweight. You are sugarcoating the problem. The problem is that you're overweight to begin with. You need to hit the gym. You need to have the discipline to consistently go to the gym. And bro, maybe you hate the gym, that's fine. Maybe you hate lifting weights, okay? Find a way to stay physically physically active that you enjoy, whether that's a sport, whether that's a combat sport, whether that's a hobby like cycling or running. Find something to stay active and get yourself to burn more calories than you're consuming. It is that simple. You do that, the second part of how you look is how you dress. If you can effectively do the first part, how you dress becomes simple. Style for men is so easy. In the summertime, you'll see me in tank tops almost all the time. I'll throw maybe like a some lightweight shirt over. It is easy, it's affordable, it's cheap, it's simple if you look good. If you already have a nice physique, it doesn't matter what you put on. It could be a t-shirt, it could be a quarter zip. As long as it's a basic that highlights your great physique, you're good, bro. And that's what I do with essentials. Like, why do you think I created essentials? Well, I, I didn't do some high-end fashion line that does create, because it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, the pieces could be great, but at the end of the day, I just wanted basics because I know that if you acquire those basics and you have a great physique, I've pretty much built your entire wardrobe and you're ready for the 1%. And by the way, we're about to drop April 1st and you already know, these drops, they fly like this, bro. We sell out, go to the site now, everything's gone because our basics actually fit right. And now that we've brought in three professional designers to help us curate what is the largest collection we've ever done, you better believe this is gonna fly. So if you're trying to better your style, find the right pieces, bro. And maybe it's not my brand, I mean, Obviously, it's gonna be my brand. But maybe you don't like my brand. Find a brand that works for your body type. And when your body type is fit, it's easy. But you're not done. You have to then move to grooming. Notice how much work this takes. And this video is gonna sound like a lot. But as a man that's gone through it himself, I can tell you my day is very simple. You start to structure and organize everything. 
right? When it comes to your grooming, I've showed you my five minute shower routine. I am able to fully groom my beard, do my skincare, actually shower, right? Scrub down, shampoo, condition, do the whole nine. I'm able to then step out the shower, do my skincare, put the fragrance, all within five minutes. Most of you will take half an hour in the shower and then complain that you don't have the time to keep up with your beauty routine, to keep up with the stuff that you need to do to take care of your skin. That's what most of you will do. But if you truly are dedicated to this, you need a good grooming routine. Because after you've taken care of the body, after you've taken care of the clothes that goes on the body, how you look here matters, right? Take care of the eyebrows. You wanna keep them trim. You don't, want, you don't want them to be bushy. This beard, it has to be on point. Always trimmed down, always well taken care of. If you have the money, go to the barbershop at least once a month. That, that should be bare minimum. And if you don't have the money for it, still no excuse. Buy yourself a trimmer, it's 60 bucks on Amazon. Look, your first couple cuts are, gonna, cuts are gonna be terrible, but learn to give yourself a cut just so you can have that crispy fade. Just so you can have that clean cut so you can look put together. This is just level one. This level is the most important one because it's the superficial level. And what you do not understand is that it's instant. You start implementing this now within a week, within a month, you will feel like a different man. You will look in this, yourself in the mirror and look like a different man. And if you're starting a fat man or a skinny man and you put on muscle or lose, lose the weight, you truly will look in the mirror and won't even recognize yourself. That's how powerful this level is. Now we start going into the big leagues. You just learned the easy stuff. That's the, that's the easy stuff. But now you gotta be a masculine man. See, in today's society, the more they push out masculinity, the more you should fight to keep it. It doesn't matter what people tell you. Biologically, we are engineered to be masculine and to attract the opposite sex. The more masculine you are, the more you will attract a feminine counterpart. So what does this mean? You have to be a man of composure. This means a man that's not in motion. A man that can stay his route, right? You're focused and zeroed in on yourself. And, and this is what I've noticed about masculine men. When you have your own purpose, right? Your own vision. You're not worried about drama, bro. You're not starting online beef, bro. I've been doing this for so long. People have come at me from left, right. I've heard, bro, I've heard every loser on the internet have my name in their mouth. I've never addressed it, never once. I've never brought anybody's name down. Doesn't matter. I don't need to. I can become successful without ever doing that. You stay composed. Why? Because you have a purpose. I have, I know exactly where I'm going. What anybody else says along the way doesn't matter. But what happens with most men that are feminine, that don't have that masculine trait, you get, you get derailed, you get defocused, right? Somebody says something bad about you, not only does it hurt your feelings, but now you're wasting your time and energy giving it to them by responding to that situation. You do this in your daily life. You do this with your friends. You do this with your family, right? And it only magnifies the more successful you become. You have to maintain your composure and you do that through discipline. You do that through the first thing. See, everything in life is interconnected. And when you truly become 1%, when you have that mentality, every little thing you do, even the stuff that you believe, oh, that's skincare, you know, what's the big deal with that? Or, oh, you know, showering every morning or putting on that fragrance. Every little thing that you do, that you remain consistent and disciplined in, it transcribes through everything else in life. This is why the gym is so great, right? When you go to the gym and you force yourself to be disciplined, in other words, what is discipline? It's doing the stuff that you do not want to do, but you know you have to do because there's a greater good at the end of that. So when you do that on small things, like the gym, waking up on time, right? With, with, with your grooming, with your appearance, that effort, I'm telling you from personal experience, it ends up multiplying and magnifying across every aspect of your life. So what happens in business? I have been doing, I have been in business for 12 years, 10 to 12 years, a decade of doing this. I cannot tell you, I would say 95% of that time, I have not wanted to do the business. When things are tough, when the bank account's at zero, when you got debt, this, that, and the other, when things aren't going your way, you will not be motivated, but you remain disciplined. You remain composed. You build your work ethic. Right? And this is, I, I said this before once in a video, I judge a man by his work ethic. That's who you are, right? I judge, I judge a man by what they are biologically engineered to do. This is what I'm, that is what I'm built for, all of us. And any guy that's online telling you, oh, it's not natural for us to be working 40 hours a week, 40 hours is chump change. 
40 hours are rookie numbers, especially when, bro, this young, at this age, you should be hungry, relentless. Your work ethic should be unmatched, right? And people will tell you that's toxic, of course, right? That whole toxic masculinity BS, right? People will tell you that's not, that's not okay, but you need those people. See, I'm not mad at people like that. I'm actually glad people like that exist. You have to have that. I have this thing. I've talked about this before, right? This is your standard deviation curve. And what I like about this is that it basically explains that even in chaos, there's order, right? Even in randomness, there's order. And when you look at a standard deviation curve, you always have the bulk, right? One standard deviation from the mean, you have 70% of the population in anything. Height, right? Attractiveness, uh, money, it always applies. These people at the end, at the end of the bell curves, the low end and the high end, which is two standard deviations, 95% of the population falls within two standard deviations from the mean. That percentage all the way at the corner, the 1%, that means that the bulk of the world needs to fall in the center. So when you hear people telling you everybody can become the 1%, what did I tell you in the beginning of this video? It's impossible. Statistic most of you will never become millionaires. Most of you will never touch that money in your bank account, and that should irk you. As I said that, that should bother you. That should, and I hope it wakes you up, but it won't. It won't, I'm telling you right now, it won't. Statistically speaking, you will never touch that type of money. I'd be surprised if you touch 100 grand, let alone a million dollars. All of you want it, but most of you will fall in that middle. You need people that do not like to work. You need people that think, oh, I need work-life balance. I just want a vacation all the time. I need people like that. Because statistically impossible, the 1% is not big enough for the 100%. The 1% is not big enough for the 99, the rest of the world. There needs to be people that want that lifestyle so people like you, the, the ones that truly wanna make it to the top, can develop an insane work ethic that when people look at you, they call you crazy. When people look at you, they say, what's wrong with you? You need balance, you need work-life balance. What they do not understand is that insane work ethic gives you the most amount of freedom. I am able to do whatever the hell I want now because I'm insanely disciplined and I have work ethic and I have built my own empire, right? You're not able to do that if you do not have work ethic. You will be a slave for the rest of your life if you're not able to outwork everyone around you and build something that's substantial. And ultimately, to close off on masculinity, you have to have total self-control, right? What did I say, right? I have insane work ethic. I'm also disciplined. You will not sidetrack me, doesn't matter. And although when you get to a point of excess, and this will happen in your life, when you, when you enter the 1%, you will get to a point of excess with women, you will get to a point of excess with money, and through money you will even get to a point of excess with friendships. If you are able to remain self-control, uh, by the way, you will also get to a point of excess with vanity, with empty pleasures like drugs, alcohol, all of that, because money is easily accessible to you. But if you have self-control, when you're able to, that's true virtue. You know, Jordan Peterson said a great quote where he talked about, you know, weak men aren't inherently nice. They're just weak and they don't have the capability to be bad. They don't have the capability to be formidable or dangerous. The true virtue is when you are dangerous, when you are formidable, and then you learn to control it. That's a virtuous man. So you, as a virtuous man, as you continue to build yourself as a one percenter, right? You have access to any woman you want. You have access to all the money in the world. You can, you can be deplorable. You can engage in any type of degeneracy you want, but you don't because you have work ethic, you have discipline, you have self-control, and that is true virtue. True virtue that will make you a man of wealth, which takes me to the third point, right? As a one percenter, you do need money. You will not become a one percenter if you don't have one percent type of cash. And statistically speaking, that means you need to make about half a million dollars a year, at least in the US. Congratulations, you've entered the one percent of the world. When you play this game, this is one of those routes that is a long-term thing, right? Like I said, as we start, it's easy. These things that I'm teaching you, th those are the easy ones. We're starting to enter the complex things. And money's hard. Money's not something that it's overnight. Whoever tells you that is lying to you. They're scamming you, et cetera. Right? You should think long-term, you should think 10 years, 20 years. And it's funny, because for me, 
I've always thought long term, right? I, at first it was, all right, I gotta, I gotta make sure my family's taken care of. As soon as I had children, as soon as I got married and I built a family, my mindset, you know, it, it's almost like the work ethic kicked in. It, it wasn't that, oh man, now I need to spend more time with my family, which I, by the way, I love to spend time with my family. It's, it's, it's the best time of my day. But it's almost like I went into overdrive. And now it wasn't just, all right, immediate family. Now you start thinking about generations. And when you put that level of responsibility on your shoulders, you will be amazed at to, as to what you can do, right? So again, I'm not thinking the next two years. At this point, I'm thinking the next 30, 40, 50, 60. What does that look like? So when you start thinking about wealth in your life, you wanna get the, into the 1%. Don't think, all right, I need to be a millionaire by next year, F that. Think, all right, I gotta be a millionaire within the next 10 years. That's gonna do a few things. One, you're not gonna be sh so short-sighted, right? So you're not gonna get derailed easily. You're not gonna get demotivated easily because you understand this is a long-term game. It's gonna be a hard game. You also will be much more likely to enter the 1% because I have yet to meet a man that has been disciplined, consistent, and truly focused on something for over 10 years and not get to his goal. I've yet to meet that man and I would love to meet him. And any guy that tells you that, that th that's them, you know, oh, me, me, I've, I've done that, they're lying to you. They were either not disciplined enough, they weren't consistent enough, they didn't put enough work, right? Because people think, oh, just because you've thought about being a millionaire for a long time, you should become a, no. Did you read the books? Did you network? Did you put in the work? Did you fail? Did you risk? Probably didn't do any of the above. Think long term. Now we're going into love, man. Single-handedly, the most important decision I ever made in my life is who I marry. Single-handed, over anything I've ever done. And it probably will always be that. Who you choose as a life partner can destroy you or build you up. My wife, I am blessed enough to say, she builds me up every day. She understands who I am. To my core, when I'm broken, she mends those wounds. She doesn't need to, I'm a self-motivated man, yet she still decides to motivate me. She sees that I'm stressed out, because she can tell, right? When you've lived with someone long enough, you understand their, their, their body language, their emotions. She knows when I'm beat up, right? She loves, she cares, she's tender, she's there. That builds you up. That gives you unlimited capacity. And by the way, you can do it on your own. It's much easier when you have somebody by your side. Love is important in your life. I've said this before also. Love, it's like a super drug. It enhances the human experience. At the end of the day, you don't want to make it to the top of the mountain, having banged a thousand whores, but you're there by yourself. It's not beautiful, man. You want to make it to the top of the mountain and be able to laugh with somebody that was there the entire ride. Right? You want to make it to the top of the mountain and be able to embrace every situation, every new beginning with somebody that's right next to you, that truly loves you, that's supporting you, that's your number one, yo, she is my number one cheerleader. And then when you do the menial tasks, right? Like, I have been in, in down points with her. When you're down, when you're beat up, you're not motivated at work, but you come home, it's almost like problems go away, right? It's a, it, it's a place to de-stress. It's a place where you can almost recharge to take on the day again. Because a man, your life will be hard. And the more risk, the more you take on to try to become a 1% man, the more difficult your life will become. Conversation I have with my brother all the time. The more we push to make more money, the more we risk, the more difficult our life becomes. Increasingly. And I am okay with that. And my life is more comfortable I can endure more pain because I have love in my life. The love of my wife, the love of my children. You can't, you can't change that. And as a man, that should be your priority, to build a family. It also takes commitment. It also takes virtue, right? Because one of the problems that I hear a lot with the whole 1% theory, and I've, I've said this since day one, is the idea that marriage is a problem. Marriage is not a problem. Yeah, you, you should be very careful. It, it, it could go very wrong, but everything in life takes risk. The chances of my business succeeding, most I think it's like 90 plus percent of businesses fail within the first three years. That's the risk you take, you still take that risk. So just because 50% of marriages fail, you're telling me you're not gonna take the risk, knowing the positive that's on the other side? And when you build yourself up as, as a truly masculine man, most of those problems don't exist in your life. I live an amazing life. I've been with my wife now five years. 
I would not change your, I, I just wouldn't change my life. For anything, I wouldn't change my life. I live a great life. Why? Because I'm in my masculine frame. I am in my masculine purpose. She is in her feminine frame. And it complements each other so beautifully that all the BS that you hear online, all the problems, bro, I do not deal with those on a day to day because you build yourself up to be that consistent, disciplined man. And any woman you meet, I promise you will fall in line. The more masculine you become, the more any woman you talk to will fall in line. And here's another thing. The better you build yourself, because it doesn't stop. By the way, I'm, I've been married five years. I still have not stopped self-improvement. That's the mistake most men make. That's why she ends up leaving you, bro. You don't stop. Because it gets to a point that, again, yes, women are naturally hypergamous. But when you're truly a 1% man, where is she going to go? You're that guy. You're that guy. So yes, she's going to fall in line. Your problems disappear when you truly build yourself up. Marriage is a beautiful thing. True love is a beautiful thing. It builds virtue, right? Because you do not want to fall into the lustful nature of who you are as a human. It is no different than being entrapped by pornography. No different. Which ultimately rolls me to my last point. You build a family. The, your last arc and your hero story is building a family. You could take it all away. Take the money away. Take, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian man. I believe in God. But you can take God away, right? You can take science away. At the end of the day, all that matters biologically is that you transfer your DNA to the next generation. And we know through any statistic that the chances of success for your offspring are enhanced in a two-parent household that is stable. So now when I think about my family, you as a color, I'm a colored person, I'm a person of color. If you are a person of color, if you are a minority, you understand the disadvantages that are in society, especially being a person of color. You know every statistic, you should know them, especially if you're a black or, or a Hispanic or Latino like myself. And instead of crying about how life isn't fair, they got a head start and we didn't. I'm thinking about how do I give my kids the best head start possible? Not only with knowledge of life, but with wealth. And make sure I build up my family name so when my kids enter the ring, so when my kids start to play, they start at a head start. And they're able to build things I was never able to build because I had to start further back. I had to learn things that I, nobody could ever teach me. Think about what you could do for your lineage. Think about what the type of man you could become. That is a true 1% man. And now you are setting off your offspring. You are setting off your last name to truly live past the test of time. That's how you become 1% across every aspect of your life. Or at least that's my own life mission. And at the end of the day, everything you've seen on this channel has just been, it's been, it's been a reflection of what I live through. It's been a reflection of what I do, what I'm going through. And then I just show you guys. So everything I talked about in this video, I promise you one thing. I've never dealt with depression. I've never dealt with anxiety. I've never, bro, I truly feel, even though you, you, the stress comes, you, the problems never stop, I live a great life, man. A great balanced life that I would never trade for anything. And I promise you this, you implement what I'm telling you over the course of the, first of all, the first ones you're gonna see instantly. The latter ones, over the course of five years, over the course of 10 years, you truly not only will enter the 1%, you will be a happy man, but most of you will never do it.